And welcome, Rooster Boosters, to Rooster Booster Time with the big guy, Scott Ferrara. Today, we have a special interview with uh, William Burke. He is one of the Roosters that signed last year. Unfortunately, uh, his first pro season got truncated, which, you know, sucks, but it, it is what it is. So I would just like to thank Will. And, uh, Will, tell us a little about a little bit about yourself, how, how you started in rugby, you know, how you – is it a family thing? Is it a friend thing? Did a teacher tell you? Like, how did you start in rugby? So it's not a family thing or a friend thing. I actually started when I went to college. I was just walking through like the main college complex and someone came up to me with a flyer and told me they had a local team. They asked if I was on the football team. I said no. And they said you should just come out for a practice at uh, UB where I attended uh, school. And then I went, went to practice. And I thought, you know, I, this could be for me. So I figured I started to play for fun. And I think it was in three games and I was starting for them. So I just kind of stuck with it since and took off from there. Took like a fish to nice. water. Uh, yeah, a lot of guys have that experience from the States. I have that same experience, too. I actually heard about rugby in high school through a teacher, didn't get to play in high school, and once I went to college, you know, we had a club team, so decided, why not, Division Four? Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> it, it didn't take that much uh, time out of my study, so I figured, why yeah. not? Um, so we're just gonna we're gonna talk about um, your experience at UB. So you played all four years? Yeah, all four years there. Yep. And, and then- you were always front row? Yeah, I always played tight head, and then I didn't yeah. switch to loose head because I can play both now until I went on to a men's club and then played in Ireland. Yeah. Awesome. So, so where did you play in Ireland? So I played for in Lurgan. It's in Northern Ireland. Yeah, it's like outside nice. of Belfast there. Yeah. Nice. I love Belfast. I was just there. Uh, oh, it's almost going to be a year. It'll be a year in August. Love Belfast. Love Ireland as a whole. Um, but yeah, particularly love Belfast. It was great. Um, and you you always you didn't play any other position at all. Like no, no, move you around. Prop. It's uh, been prop yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. Lucky you. Yeah. When yeah, I started right. as an underclassman, right. yeah, freshman and sophomore year, I was at flank because we had two uh, junior props. Yeah. And as soon as they graduated, they're like, "Oh, we're moving you to the front row." I'm like, great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, how did you how how did you get to 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 a contract? And on, well, first you were with the practice squad at Rooney, and then they offered you a contract. That's correct. Yeah. So I played. So I got done in school. Uh, last year in December, so it would be two years ago now. But And then after that, I started playing with the local men's uh, club because they asked me to come play for them. So I signed off my eligibility, and then I was still attending school, and I started playing with them for their playoff run for the Elite Eight. It's like uh, amateur men's club Elite Eight with the national uh, playoff bracket there. And I played with them, and then the coach there got me with, in, uh, in contact with the team in Ireland. I went and played in Ireland. Then I once once I got back, I played one game with them, and it was their uh, season uh, playoff championship game, and that's where I played. I had a really good game. I only played forty minutes too. You didn't even start me because I had been playing with the team, and they didn't want to, you know, get bad blood with the guy that been playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I played the second half, and then I played a really good game. Like I just dominated in the scrums. So I got a couple tries, and that that just got some attention. Uh, they got a hold of Greg. Greg got a hold of me, invited me as like a tryout cut type thing on the practice squad, and then. Came back after the first uh, half in uh, December. Came back January 3rd, and they told me they're going to offer me a contract. So, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I think Greg sniffs out all the Irish guys. If, if you've even kind of played, if you, if you visited yeah. Ireland, yeah, he sniffs you guys the, out. The Irish click there. <laughs> you know. That's great. So what did you graduate? What's your degree in? Uh, I have two degrees. One is psychology and sociology. Oh, Jesus. Double yeah, major yeah. in psych and social. That's yeah, always and fun. I graduated in 2019. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I just got some basic questions for you. Uh, very easy stuff here. So we're going to go with who's your uh, sports hero? Could be any probably, sport. It could be rugby. Probably Tyson Fury. I like him. He really? just because what he's battled back through with uh, mental health and he's very open book. He's uh, completely himself and obviously he's the best in the sport in my opinion, especially after his last fight with Deontay Wilder. Oh, yeah. He's, he's up house. there, especially right now. He's, yeah, he's, yeah. he's number one, so it's always good to see the champ up there. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. What's the uh, what's the best part about competing in the MLR? It's the highest level, you know, that you can compete at. So that's always satisfying because as like an athlete or a competitor in general, you always want to play at the highest level possible. And it's just nice to be able not to have to go, say, over to Ireland to try and climb through the ranks there or any other country. You can kind of go from a lot of guys. I mean, I went to Ireland, but um, a lot of guys can go from college now, college programs straight to the MLR, which a lot of guys have been. I know a lot of guys on our team that did that. So it's nice with that. And it's local. Like my parents can come watch a game, you know, and then it's all televised on ESPN now. So it's pretty sweet. Yeah. It's it's great. The, um, 
the extensiveness of which people can actually watch the matches, especially with that ESPN yeah. plus um, thing. Be, I mean, it exposes the other, uh, the other fans to watching the other teams. Cause yeah. even, even the NFL now, like, you know, if you live in New York, you not, don't necessarily watch Pittsburgh or green Bay or, yeah, LA. Yeah. you know, and with this subscription, I think it, it, it gives you that broader sense of what the MLOs are about. And you can watch all the other teams play and you can actually know, know everybody know, know what's going on know who what which teams are hot but yeah. it's funny getting back to your what you were saying about um coming out of college i actually had this discussion the other day and um i don't know if it's if it's like people from england they have you know they have the academies you know you know, yeah. you know what i'm talking about and i think right now mlr doesn't need to do academies per se they can just pull from the college ranks and yeah. the, the issue the issue the person was having with me was well the the team can't control the player f- you know, because they're in college. And I said, well, in most American professional sports, that doesn't happen anyway. Yeah. Like college football, big example. If you're playing for whatever, you know, San Diego State and you get drafted by the New York Giants, those coaches and, and, and offensive coordinators or defensive coordinators, they have nothing to do with you building you up until you get on the team. Yeah. Um, so I think right now, as far as the MLR is concerned, um, being where it is, it already has a pipeline of collegiate players so why start uh, to mess with kids and pull them out of that collegiate system so i just yeah. think that's a great point i think you, you you thank you for proving my point is what yeah. i'm trying yeah. to say of of um <laughs> uh what is your favorite sports quote uh favorite sports quote i honestly i don't i don't know if i have one to be honest um yeah that's a tough yeah, one I, yeah it's tough yeah. to like right off the cuff i was gonna say I don't think I really have one, to be honest. It's funny uh, because Dylan Fawcett went right to Man United because it doesn't it's like a big deal. Yeah, but um, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, it's a t- I mean, there's so many, especially in American sports, there's so many between athletes and coaches, yeah, and announcers yeah, mm-hmm. giving great quotes. It's tough. So I, I yeah. trust me, I, I don't think I could pull one out of my hat either. Yeah, I was um, thinking maybe something by Vince Lombardi, but that's about it, you know, because <laughs> he's, he's, you know, pretty well known in American sports yeah. culture, Muhammad Ali, even. Uh, they actually had they interviewed. Um, oh, I got a good guy. one actually. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who it's by, but it's hard work beats success when success doesn't work hard enough or talent doesn't work hard enough. Excuse me. That works. I, I like that. One. I love by said William it. Burke. By yeah, William Burke. You exactly. said it here. You said it here. No, that's a that's a great one. Yeah, there's so many. Um, it's again. So sorry for kind of throwing that one at you. No, you're good. Uh, that's you're a good. tough one. But um, so if you now I asked this question to uh, to the butcher, and of course his answer was, is a little different than everybody else's, but what is your favorite song to listen to prior to a match? Uh, this is really cheesy, man. And it might be even more extravagant than, uh, butchers, but I was obsessed with like the Rocky movies when I was a kid. <laughs> so I like to listen to eye of the tiger <laughs> before like anything big, you know, or I'll listen to that. Like at some point I gained, I don't know if it's like right before the match, but it's close to it. Listen, It's on every playlist you have. Actually, Butcher's answer was he doesn't have one, which is a typical Butcher course, answer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it depends on my mood and, you know, yeah, and the whole so. thing. He's, yeah, he has a little, he, he's a little kind of into the, the rugby culture, I think, you know, it's yeah, all, yeah, it, sure. about preparation and the professionalism, yeah. which he, he has is a little, is, is matches his personality. Definitely. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Very hard, you know, hard guy. I, like I love that. Stuff, no, I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the Rocky movies, obviously, growing up in the states, is like, especially it's you, iconic. Yeah. yeah, and we're at the age where our fathers were making us watch these movies before they were readily available, like on television. Yeah, like, I remember my father throwing in the tape, like he had taped Rocky, you know, yeah. when I was little kid, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So I get on a pre-match, a pre-match thing. What's your favorite pre-match meal? Pre-match meal. Uh, it's usually I if we have a match, say like two o'clock, I usually eat, you know, some like a hearty breakfast. I'll probably have like six eggs, you know, some carbs of some sort, and then uh, some fruit. And then I don't really eat before the match. I'll usually maybe like a protein bar and like a banana. And I make sure I hydrate a lot, but I don't like to eat too mm-hmm. close to the match. So usually just a big breakfast, like a classic, like American style breakfast is what I'll eat. Usually nice. pretty early in the morning to like seven, eight o'clock. Nice. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean that's that was I think that's a lot of guys um pre match thing is is to not eat too close to the match. Um, you know, give something eat something that's gonna give you a lot of protein, a couple carbs for for some energy and just, you know, yeah. Kind of 
hydration is a big thing. Unfortunately, you didn't get yeah, to see it or be a part of it this year. But you know, hopefully next year when you go to MCU, you're going to realize just how hot it gets there, especially in May. Um, yeah, having I no cover, being on the beach. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was actually as as the season went on, and you had teams like um, uh, Seattle or Colorado come through. You could mm. tell that maybe they hadn't prepared uh, the best they could as far as hydration because they're used to their weather, and yeah. they had been playing home. They had been playing home games since match one, where Rudy, you know, stacked all their home games two years ago. The last eight games, so it was just like yeah. hot day, hot day, hot day from May to freaking June. It was it was nuts. It was nuts. I mean, yeah. just sitting there as a fan and not having cover, like the first match, I was like, "Whoo!" I really like have to cover myself up and use the suntan lotion and all that. Yeah, um, yeah. Luke, Luke Hume, who was on the team uh, in 2019, yeah, infamous, you know, the bald eagle. He, uh, yeah, <laughs> he ridiculous. He would get so red and be so red after a match. I'm like, and and I know. I know he's he's from the southern hemisphere, but still, he just he was like, man, I didn't prepare for that first one. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife was was rubbing me with lotions. Yeah, right. <laughs> first match. Uh, it's I'm, tough, man. Yeah, it, it's tough to prepare, especially if you don't know how it, it goes for the first for the, yeah. the first time you're doing something. The but warmest I think game. Now, yep. Yeah, the warmest game I ever played it was it was ninety five degrees. It was in that Elite Eight tournament. It was on turf, yeah. and the turf soaks up the heat. It was awful. Oh, man. That's the worst. It's god awful, especially in the scrums when you come together. You can feel the heat coming off the other pack. It's just it's it's awful. I had similar um, playing conditions like you did up in Buffalo. I went to Massachusetts, so it was oh, a lot okay. of just freezing cold, yeah. hard ground. Yeah. Everything was on. Well, for us, everything we were Division Four, so everything was on grass. So it was frozen most of the time. Ah. Uh. Um, even going, we would play. Uh, <clears throat> there was this tournament in Lindenville, Vermont, at Linden State. Oh, and it would be right around, yeah, right around our our spring break, and yeah. it was covered in ice every year. I'm like, this yeah. is a great spring break. Yeah. On real yeah, right. in Mexico, you know, yeah, and I'm right. playing on a you know a cow field in Vermont. But it was always fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't course. complain. It was, you know, you look at it uh, as 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 a fun as a fun time. So here's yeah. another pre-match thing. What do you do to calm the butterflies before the match? If you have any, maybe you're just one of those guys that just is, is chill. Yeah, I'm usually pretty chill. I don't get like a lot of guys get real hyped up, you know, or get real amped up and they have like a ritual they go through. I just um, like when I do get anxious or anything, I just remind myself that, you know, like I'm a prof like I'm a professional rugby player for a reason. I'm here and I've got to carry myself this far and just do what you do best. Treat it just like a practice or any other match and just go out there and play to my best ability. You know, and if you mess up, you mess up, you just move on. So that's exactly. I love that answer. Yeah. I love that answer. Um, I think younger uh, players in rugby, whatever sport, they get a little nervous to make a mistake. And yeah. you're going to make mistakes. I mean, everybody makes mistakes every day of their life, and especially in a sport, I think kids dwell on that. Yeah. And I, I coach I coach youth football, so I always tell them, you know, if you're going to make a mistake, you made a mistake and we're going to move on. It's, you know, in football, it's down, uh, next play, don't make the mistake. Yeah. And I think having – if, if you can get a great coach and a great set of even parents who can teach you that, um, it'll actually help you be a better person too because if you can transfer that into your job. You can transfer that into your relationships in life. So I really, yeah, really love that answer. Um, so, okay. So if, you're, if your favorite uh, song to listen to is, is Eye of the Tiger, is your favorite sports movie Rocky or is it something else? No, it would probably be Remember the Titans, to be oh, honest. Just be, okay. It's a classic, and then it, it like brings in the, you know, the race aspects and the American history and everything else. Mm -hmm. And it's just a classic. That movie will always give me goosebumps, man. I've probably watched movie. the Rocky okay. movies way too many times. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, you're kind of jaded by them by now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah sure. That's a great movie. Uh, let me guess, you were a football player in high school? Yeah, yeah, I was. <laughs> what position in football? A uh, linebacker. Oh, yes, he's a pretty boy. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. That's not alignment, surprisingly. <laughs> well, I mean, for your build, you're kind of quick. You have that quote-unquote low center of gravity. So yeah. linebackers don't need to be tall guys. They just need to be kind of square guys, and you fit that bill. Yeah. Um, I'm, more, I'm more of a round guy, so, you know, offensive yeah. line. <laughs> like, um, yeah. So in practice, how do you and your teammates have a little fun in practice? I know that Greg is very regimented in like minute by minute, you know what you're doing, but yeah, you know, how, how do you guys have a little fun to loosen up? I mean, we just have good, like, uh, I don't know, inside jokes, I would say it, or like everybody's got good banter with each other. So like 
before we go out, you know, it's always just loose, very loose, even with the coaches, everybody's relaxed. Like you said, Greg is regimented. So when we get on, we go and get on because, you know, training sessions only are 45 minutes, you know, so we know if we're out there and we're always busy, so you don't really have time to think and it's, you know, you just get it done. But in between while we're warming up, because we get a stretch on the field before and everything else and our uh, strength and conditioning coach, Ian Jones, he's a pretty cool guy as the season went on. He loosened up and got to know everybody. So we just joke around and keep it loose until it's time to work. And when we work, we work. And then after training, it's the same deal. You know, keep it loose. Just a lot of jokes. Yeah, good. You know, it's nice. It's it's good to see. I think it's easier for a player uh, when you go into a practice, kind of just knowing that, all right, we know we're going to do this, this, and this, and you don't have to worry about what you're doing next. And you yeah. can just kind of go with the flow. It, it, I, for me, I would feel it'd be the mental aspect would be make, way easier for me. It would take the anxiety away of like what's going on. So, yeah, yeah, of course. It's very regimented. Yeah. Yeah. He gives us um, a schedule before a training session, even too. So it's nice. We know it's awesome. Happening. Yeah. So you know exactly what you're going to do and, and what you're going to work on. So, yeah. what, what was your living situation down here? So, I lived in uh, one of the houses on Staten Island. We call it the murder house wow. because it's probably the creepiest <laughs> looking house from the outside, but it's a great house. Uh, I live with JP, Alec, um, what is it, Workin, uh, Perry, G, Jonas, and then Charlie when he got here. So it was good. And then Mike calling oh, us. Uh, except for JP. Yeah. Yeah, JP. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had a lot of forwards. every every huge dude in the house, and then JP, yeah. and then JP. Yeah. <laughs> also, so you you think living in the house with the guys did that bring the not that it was instant, but did that kind of help ease all you guys in with camaraderie and kind of getting to know each other? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. And then it's uh, it's good because you can chat about everything about rugby and then watch film and you know bounce ideas off each other and train with each other on off days. And yeah, and as far as like you know going out or having fun or even if it's just sitting around the table just chatting. It eases you and everything. You get to know each other a lot quicker and a lot more uh, intimately, you know. And it translates on the field, you know, if you're playing with those guys. You know, their tendencies and everything else. You know? so yeah, definitely. Definitely helps. I think, I think it's definitely unique to the New York circumstances because if yeah. you go to Seattle or if you go to Utah or Colorado, not that they aren't doing that, but I think because of, on, on, unfortunately, pr renting and property prices in New York, it's kind of a necessity for especially people who don't, um, who are coming here either, you know, from a different country or from a different side of the state even, and you haven't yeah. set up yet. I think it's it's unique to have all those guys. I mean, we they had what two houses in Staten Island and, and one still in, uh, I think uh, Harlem. So, yeah. I mean, yep. you want like eighty percent of the players were kind of living together throughout the season. Yeah, which is nice. yeah, so, it helps too, man. Especially if you're oh, a younger guy too. It's just like coming out of college because I live, you know, with four guys in college. So same deal. Yeah, so yeah. you're just kind of easing into the almost the same situation without having to really worry about it. You just say, "Hey, here's a house. This is where we're, this is where we practice." And now you have like guys like Matt Workin, you know, the the guys who played last year, two or three years in yeah. you know, going or going on three years or going on two years as a professional. They can kind of tell you, "Hey, this is and maybe th these are the mistakes we made last year where we were having too much fun or we were taking it too seriously," and they can yeah. kind of ease into it because I I could see how that could be one of those. Uh, learning curves that you may not have because it was your yeah. first year. Yeah, you definitely got to find that fine balance between fun and like taking your, you know, you're a professional. So you got to be professional about it, you know, your preparation, diet, everything. Absolutely. So. Well, I think last year it was funny. One of the things, the guys played great, obviously. They got to the semifinals and lost at the death to San Diego, which was probably the best team in the league. Yeah. But I think they kind of carried themselves on the energy of it being, well, most of them, it was their first year or coming to America to play professionally. Um, so it kind of carried them as energy. And this year I could tell just watching the a couple practices, hey, they're, they've – well, even beforehand, a lot of the guys came in like uh, Patty and James, and they were, they were already slim. They didn't have to lose that, you know, quote-unquote baby fat preseason. They were already yeah. in shape coming into the season, and you could see it um, practice one. I got, I got to see your guys' first practice. Uh, it was very – Nice to see Patty Ryan kicking the ball on a grubber kick, chasing it, and actually yeah. beating the guy. So I was like, yeah, oh, right. that happened last year. And and I think guys are understanding what it's, what it's taking now. And and it's it's great to see. I, I loved it. I was so disappointed that the season got suspended. But, you know, yeah, things happen. It's tough. Um, mm. So if you could play another professional sport, what would it be? And don't say football. Um, I don't know. I'd probably either – I'd probably box, man. I'd box or maybe really? MMA. Yeah, I wrestled in high school. I enjoyed it. And then uh, I just I follow the sports pretty closely, so yeah. Either do you think either wrestling or those. helps you be a better tackler. Hundred percent, 
hundred percent. And it helps um, with discipline, you know, as far as like having to do the weight cutting and, you know, the, as the training is probably some of the most vigorous training you can go through as far as, you know, sport in high school. So that, all that teaches discipline and like what you have to do. And then uh, tackling, especially at lower body height and then scrummaging as well as for body position yeah. is huge. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even think about that portion. Yeah, no, yeah. that definitely makes a, a ton of sense. Um, boxing or MMA? So we know Tyson Fury is is right now your favorite uh, uh, athlete. Um, but MMA, who's your favorite MMA fighter? Well, it's definitely not Conor McGregor. Sorry, boys. <laughs> um, I would have to say, because I've got a few, um, probably Steep A. Miokic, or um, I do like uh, Jorge Masvidal. And then, um, I, I mean, yeah. how do you not like Stipe? He's a freaking firefighter, and then he fights on this. Like his yeah. side gig is fighting in the, yeah, in the just as street. a person, man. Just yeah. as a person, or a uh, cowboy Cerrone as well. I like uh, him. Cowboy, he's, he's great. American icon there, type guy. Yeah, I mean, you know? he's a nut. I mean, he's like, oh, I need four weeks for a match. Yeah, I'll take yeah, that. Yeah, match. take that match. He steps up <laughs> and, and then he's ready to be there. Yeah, yeah. No, that's and, great. And he's he's prepared. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you to be a good person? Wait, one more time. Just you broke up a little bit there. Yeah. Uh, how does being an athlete inspire you to do good and be a good person? Uh, just as far as um, like you feel like maybe people look up to you a little bit more, so you, you kind of take on that role, I think. And as far as like um, what you're instilled with, like growing up being an athlete, because I've just played sports my whole life, is the uh, I guess uh, things they distill in you or coaches teach you, even Greg at this level. Uh, to carry it on to be a good person and be reliable, you know, you got to be a reliable teammate or you're not going to perform on the field. So just uh, things that translate that you learn in the game that you can translate to the rest of your life as far as accountability, being reliable, being prepared, you know, being responsible and just be overall being a good person, you know, because nobody nobody wants to be around a person that's full of themselves or you know arrogant or any of those things. It's just there's no there's no place for it in rugby and there's no place for it in life. You know? So definitely. Um, so I just have a couple quick uh, more questions. So are you? St did you go back to to Buffalo or the Buffalo area, or did, are you yeah. staying in NYC? Yeah, I'm at my parents now for a little bit. Uh, I was in NYC for a little bit, and then I went and visited a friend in Virginia, and I just got out of Virginia, and now I'm back in uh, Buffalo here. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, um, well, so what things are you doing to stay in shape during the quarantine? So I've been running. Well, when I was in Virginia. My friend's a Marine, so the Marine Corps base is open, and they have gyms there. So I've been going to the gym a lot, and they also have a massive turf field. And so I could do all my rugby skills there running. And I've been running probably two or three miles a, a morning. So far, it's the most cardio I've probably ever done in a while. But I run a lot. I do uh, a lot of push-ups. Then I actually have a push-up and dip bar that I can do that on. And then I have a couple friends actually in Buffalo that one owns his own gym, so he's got a lot of weight equipment, everything I possibly need. So I just go over there, get a quick workout in. So no big deal. I'm very resourceful when it comes to to the weights, you know. So. Typical New York guy. I got a guy yeah. for this. I got a guy for that. Yeah. Um, I know this yeah. guy doing this. So yeah. so what other things are you doing for fun? Because I know a lot of guys are going stir crazy or just working out consistently. Like Trevor Cassidy seems to only be working out every day. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what do you um, what do you do besides staying in shape? So like I, I'm a pretty homebody type guy, so I have no problem. Like so, I'll do my workouts. I do my routine. I like to read a lot. So, and I like to learn. So I read a lot of like nonfiction books and just learning some new stuff or anything I find interesting. I'll pick up a book and then I'll, you know, read about it, learn about it or whatever. And then I also like movies. I'm a huge movie guy. You know, I grew like for some reason, you know, my parents, when I was growing up, always used to put a movie on. I'd be fine with it. So since I was a little kid, I've always been able to watch, you know, I could sit down and watch eight movies a day and be all right. Yeah, so <laughs> That's my wife. My wife's currently doing that now. She was, yeah. she was the Hunger Games trilogies on and I think Lord of the Rings is next. So yeah. if you, you don't do that and it's it happens to be nice here down down in, in Carmel. So I think I'm gonna do yard work later on, but um just to get outside. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's um uh you just said oh so books. So what current book are you reading then if you if you love to read? Um the one book, it's a psychology book and I forget what it's called. My mom actually just gave it to me. I can't think of the title. It's something perseverance, but I still like so like Self-help books are all right. This one's kind of like that. But I like uh, not self-help books, but uh, kind of a book, self-help book that puts science behind it. So because I'm a psych and social major, so I like to learn about people. So it's interesting to learn, like, you know, I like to read about athletes as well. I got Tyson Fury's new book, and I haven't read that yet. But I'm about to read. I can't think of the name of it because she just handed it to me today. 
but uh, it's a book. It's something perseverance. I can't remember. And then Tyson Fury's book he wrote about his. It's like his autobiography about his mental health and everything else. Nice. Yeah, yeah it's it's cool that because uh, Brandon Marshall. Uh, I don't know if he's currently on an NFL team, but when they were having the um, you know wear a cleat for a a type of you know for. A, an awareness of something. He was always the guy to, to wear. I think green is the mental health color. Um, he had mental health issues and he was encouraging people um, to, to ask for help if you had mental health issues. Um, I think now with everybody in quarantine and there's less social interaction, I mean, while social interaction online is nice, like me and you were talking, there is something about being in close contact with somebody and, and having that conversation. So I think now, especially people have to watch their mental health. Uh, definitely, definitely love that you are a reader, you know, yeah. you don't, I think people are like, Oh, rugby, you know, oh, yeah, it you doesn't know, I'm, come, a, but... head, I'm a gym rat, you know, that type of stuff. So it's nice to know that there's, there's guys who can read. There's a lot of guys went to school. A lot of guys have degrees. A lot of guys yeah. have successful careers outside of rugby. So yeah. outside of rugby, what are you looking to do? You have a bachelor's, correct? Yeah. So I was either, I was thinking about going back to school to, for, to be a clinical psychology or, I have like a weird background, man, because in high school, I also did uh, a trade. So I'm certified welder as well. Oh. So I could do that, but I can't do that with rugby. So I kind of got, I was thinking about going back to school actually soon uh, because I can do that coinciding with rugby. But yeah, I always used to uh, like, uh, I've done a lot of side work for people and like, I have a good construction background. I used to do a lot of carpentry work in uh, high school and I used to make and, you know, fabricate stuff for guys. Yeah. as well so so kennedy hasn't hooked you up with mkg yet huh he hasn't no i was working you. with him for a bit actually yeah yeah so I, I gotta you know i gotta get a hold of him again soon here i haven't <laughs> talked to him in a bit but i was working in the office right before this happened and i had a coaching job too i just oh, got really? a coaching job yeah where were you coaching? Yeah. Where were you this, coaching? it was just called uh st joe's by the sea in Staten island it's oh, a I private school yeah, yeah. yeah they're looking yeah, to I start up a program private school around the area so we we i know all the private schools you know, yeah so. yeah and they're looking up to start a program so and That's then it awesome. was like, I'm, I'm so happy to see that because Xavier, as everybody knows, is has been number one for quite some time, and I think some of the private schools have fallen off on creating programs. Where the yeah. public schools, believe it or not, the public schools are getting more and more money now to build up their athletic programs in the past couple of years, and you can see it in football with a lot of youth programs ending and and kids going to play, um, you know, in seventh and eighth grade in football. And yeah. I think. Rugby being believe believe it or not, it's actually a, a cheaper sport. You need a ball, you need the field, pretty much, and that's all. You yeah, need. it's a, a mouth yeah. card. You know, so I think a lot of high schools are going to start jumping on that now and, and give kids options. And the MLR is showing what you could do after school. You know, you can yeah, go to school, you get a degree in psychology and sociology. You can be a clinical psychologist if you want to, and you can play professional rugby. You yeah. can do whatever. You know, you could be a baker like John Quill went, and, and he's working back at the baker. Yeah, a, you know. U.S. rugby icon, and you could do that and play rugby. It's it's great to see. Uh, Will, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out. Um, it's great to see you. Um, I, I I sincerely apologize for the season sucking so badly in your first ah, season. Right. But, you know, you're definitely going to be back. Um, it was great to see you guys work. It was fun just BSing with you guys. So is there anything you want to say to the fans before we take off? Yeah, I just hope you guys are ready for next year because it's going to be a big one, man. We're just getting started. Yeah, we're going to actually – I can't wait. I'm hoping they figure out the season earlier so that way we can figure out some more away match and, and get guys out to Vegas or – New. Uh, hopefully they don't take the New England away from us this year. No, that I was know. Gonna be a, yeah, a lot of the Rooster Boosters were like, oh, you know, we, we kind of lost that one. Um, and then even this year, I think the Atlanta or the Old Glory was going to be like a Sunday at 8 p.m., and that's a tough one. So I'm hoping yeah. for a little couple little schedule changes, and I think we'll have a big outing for the uh, the away matches. And, Will, thank you so much. I appreciate it, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, man. Have a good one. All right. Bye. Stay safe.